RC from the Montauk Joiner Shop here. This is part two of the Furniture in Progress series for my Borgoigno desk, which is a project going on almost a year now. And in this part, I'll be talking about the desk gallery. You know, all the little drawers and doors and cubbies and stuff. I'll talk about the sections I've completed so far and what their intended purpose is, as well as fessing up to what my plans for the rest of the gallery are. I'll also be sharing the suspenseful tale of how I built a hidden drawer wrong and kept building it wrong until it was right. That's right, I filmed the whole affair, and if you're like me, and you like to watch other people do woodworking the way other people watch golf or fishing shows or whatever, be sure to stick around for that. So I'm going to clear off my bench, bring the desk case over here, and we'll get started. Alright, so I have the upper case for my Bargueno desk up here on my bench. If you're curious as to what the base for this Bargueno desk looks like, I talked about that in the uh, previous episode of this series and I'll leave a link in the description. That part of the project is basically 95% done. I just need to make a few tweaks to it, and I haven't really worked on it since that episode came out. I've been mostly working on this case here. And as you can see, I've started to fill it out with dividers and even some of the um, doors and cover panels and drawers and things like that. At the uh, top is where I started because I knew what I wanted to do up here. I knew what these compartments were going to be storing, and uh, at the time wasn't really 100% on what was going on down here. I'm actually building this on the fly. I don't have kind of pre-made plans uh, for this project. When I get to work on projects for myself, as is the case with this one, uh, I tend to build on the fly. I, I find it much easier to kind of react to the situation on the ground, so to speak, and design accordingly. So, And there's also kind of a certain adventure to that that is, I just love about woodworking. So at the top here, in this middle compartment, I uh, intend to put a big speaker. It's kind of like a center channel style speaker. And I didn't want to be looking at the speaker while it was in here, but I didn't want to hear it. So this is actually a speaker grill that I made here. I started out by making this little pull tab and then building a frame around it. And then I uh, filled in these vertical bars one at a time. So I had to put these little sapili pieces in here, all equally spaced out, and put these bars in one at a time. And I did cutouts in them such that they have a little bit of an arc to them. And I did some copper plugs here that are infilled with walnut in kind of a graduated size down the middle here for a little decorative effect. And I also have some English bridal leather trim up here, some uh, sapili beading to match up with the barrels of the hinges, so the whole thing just lifts up like that. And then I can reach in there and adjust the controls on my speaker at will. And then the whole thing is backed by fabric, and this is actually the same fabric I used for the seat cover for the integrated uh, kind of bench, not bench, more like a stool seat that's gonna integrate into the front of the desk. So that's gonna match up with that and hopefully let the sound through as well. So that was a fun project and I think it turned out pretty nice. I also have some uh, ebonized walnut trim in here just to kind of round the whole thing out and some sapili trim across the bottom. So that is the cover for the speaker. On either side of that, I had these long deep cubbies um, that I can store things in like peripherals. Uh, one of the things that I'll probably be storing in this desk is a, uh, a scanner. So it's kind of like a long stick kind of appliance that uh, I didn't really have a good place to stuff in this desk, but I do now. And these are just cover panels. I didn't think it would be very practical to put a drawer here because of when I'm sitting at the desk, the drawer would be you know, higher than eye level. So to put things into the top of that wouldn't make much sense ergonomically. So what I did instead was uh, make it such that yeah, I have a removable panel that I can take off. You know, and because of this opening, it didn't seem very practical to me to have a door here either. So I just made a removable panel. And I got the same thing going on the other side for some extra spillover. And I don't know if you can see in here, but there's a hole here and a hole here. This is actually a pivot. That's a pivot point for a pivoting drawer. And those come out like that. And there are shallow drawers that have uh, little dividers in them that will store things like writing utensils and, and uh, you know, memory cards, memory sticks, those kinds of things. And of course I have one on the other side as well. This is all quarter sawn sapili bottom here that's cut into a quarter circle. And then in between each of these dividers, I have some decorative sapili that I cut little keyhole arches into. And I actually chiseled out the bottoms of these arches. So I drill a hole 
and then chisel out below that. And that's how I got those little keyhole arches bracketing either side of these dividers in here. So that was pretty fun to build. And the way they fit in here is there's a uh, oak, like half inch dowel through the drawer, the pivoting drawer, as well as these two dividers. And then I uh, slid that into place through all three of these things. And then I drilled a hole straight in and put a screw in there to keep the uh, pivot from, you know, kind of falling out the bottom there. I have the rest of these dividers in place. What I intend to do here is to have cubbies here for things like mail. I'll probably make that such that it's a removable drawer with like a hidden compartment behind it. Uh, that's the plan for that. These will be little drawers that I'll be able to pull out. And I need to elevate this bottom one so that it doesn't hit the barrel on the uh, hinge for the fall front. So I have to deal with that still. In here, I have grooves routed out all the way around. And what I intend to do here is to put in some timber doors like this. So I didn't want doors that I kind of opened out into, uh, you know, cause I'll probably have a computer monitor here that I'll, that I'll set up. So I didn't want doors that opened out so much uh, down low here. So I decided to do timber doors. I've never built those before. So we'll see how that goes. And I'm still kind of mulling over how I want the doors to look, uh, what kind of decorative elements I'm going to incorporate into those. And then over here, I have a tall compartment. Right now I'm thinking what I'm gonna do is have a tall drawer here, um, and that'll essentially be like a, a, like a mini file cabinet. So I'll have uh, big files and folders in a large drawer here. I think I'm gonna have that drawer open to the side so it'll basically be little pockets right here that I'll be able to access from this side of the drawer. And so the bottom of the drawer will actually be that outside face of it. And just like over here, I'm gonna to have to elevate the bottom of this and put some sort of uh, um, supports for the drawer to run on so that it clears the hinge barrel when it gets there. This pocket underneath here is where I'm gonna be storing things like my keyboard. I might also have a kind of a fold down computer monitor that I might put in there. I also might just put the computer mon monitor behind the timbre door so that it's always kind of set up here. Um, haven't really decided how I'm gonna handle that yet, but I'm pondering that still. And then you'll notice up here that there's a pocket behind the tab for my lift up speaker grill. I decided there to actually put a hidden drawer because it's gonna be behind this tab. And also I still have to put faces on these pivoting drawers that are gonna come out into the space. So whatever's in the middle here is gonna end up kind of disappearing behind all this other stuff. And in the process of making that drawer, I decided to uh, build or lay out my dovetails and build a drawer such that there wasn't a groove around the bottom to put a bottom on it. Why I did that, I'm not entirely sure. I just figured maybe, uh, I don't know, maybe I could just design my way out of it. So I started building that and realized this is gonna be kind of difficult to put a bottom in without the groove. So I added some trim around the inside of it. Then that, that basically created a rabbit for the bottom to kind of glue to. And it kind of snowballed into this whole big thing. And what I ended up with is a hidden drawer that when you pull it out is actually quite ornate, which is fine. That's kind of what I wanted to do with this gallery. And I think that drawer is going to end up storing things like business receipts. So it's not going to be a heavy duty uh, drawer by any means, which is good because again, the bottom is not grooved into place, but just rabbited and glued in place. I filmed that whole process. So you can see how I started out with my little dovetailed box with no groove in it, and then added things on and added things on, and it became uh, kind of a decorative and design challenge to get this thing all put together such that it fits in there behind this tab, holds what I want it to hold, and looks good all at the same time. So that's coming up next. I hope you dig it.
Check the mic and make sure it sound right, boys. sound right boy
So that's it. That's how that drawer came together. Now I hope that gives you an idea of why this project is taking as long as it is. Uh, designing on the fly, one of the drawbacks of it is that you have to stop a lot and figure out what you're going to do next and react to um, the situation on the ground. Sometimes you design yourself into a corner and you kind of have to design yourself back out of it again or redo a part as the case may be. But uh, this is the drawer right here. It's dovetailed all the way around with three dovetails. And then I have some uh, cherry kind of cove molding that I did by hand and put around the sides to create a rabbit in the bottom. The bottom is just a piece of MDF that's veneered with cherry on one side and then on the other side I veneered it with some uh, handmade amate bark paper and that's just glued on with hide glue and it's a small enough panel that I just weighted it down to glue it on. And then to fill in these little corners rather than try to miter these pieces of cherry trim that aren't perfectly even all the way around because I did them by hand. Uh, instead, I put in these little Sapili corner blocks and kind of took off the corners of them with some sandpaper. Uh, it gives a nice little decorative effect as well. And then the front, the front is shaped the way it is in, in part to create a pole underneath the bottom, but also to create a decorative effect across the front of this. So this theme is actually going to be continuing in both directions onto the faces of these pivoting drawers. And let's go ahead and put it in there. It hasn't been waxed or anything like that, but there's your drawer all the way in. And the tab for my speaker grill actually fits right into that opening there. And if you look at it directly from the front, you can see these circles line up with the cutouts in the tab on both sides. And then those circles kind of get smaller in graduation as they move outward. So this piece of trim will both get narrower as it moves out to the edges and also less tall as it comes out to the edges as well. That is part of the uh, decorative effect that I'm creating here with the front of that drawer. So that's what I have so far with the Barclay desk. Obviously, there's a lot of work to do yet. I hope it turns out. <laughs> and uh, I'm looking forward to finally, finally finish this thing up and getting to show it off. So uh, thank you for watching. There will probably be another installment of this series before it's all said and done uh, about the timbre doors and things like that. Um, so stay tuned for that. And uh, if you haven't already, go ahead and give this a like and a subscribe if you like this and want to subscribe. And we'll see you next time. Thank you.